With gasoline prices going up, the cost of basic travel can take a lot out of your wallet, especially if you're a college student. Meet Acton resident David Harrington. He's a junior at UMass Lowell studying computer engineering. David has built his own electric Civic. I started this project back in 2007. Um, being a commuter at UMass Lowell, I was driving every day, gas prices went up, and I really love projects. So I started this car as a way of helping out with myself in engineering by building a project, in this case a full-blown electric vehicle, and also cut down on commuting expenses. This car allows me to drive back and forth every day and never have any problems with it. Um, most fun part of this project was the fact that I redesigned everything from scratch. Nothing was built for me. I had to go online, research motors, controllers, um, do mechanical work on mounting the motor to the transmission, and then selecting batteries, building battery racks, wiring the system, um, designing the charging system so I can plug it in every day and charge it. And it has been a very reliable car. So what I did here was I removed the exist the original gas engine and left the existing transmission. So over here is what we call a series wound DC motor. What it is is a high powered motor that is replacing existing gas engine. What I did is pull out the gas engine, remove the gas tanks, the fuel lines and everything. And we have this DC motor which was connected to the transmission. So still using the original automatic transmission. The motor is controlled by this controller which is a series wound DC controller which was also used mainly in electric vehicle drag racing. And over here we have what's called a DC DC converter that converts the main battery power to charge the 12 volt system. So you still have your lights, your windows, your wipers. We have this called a main contactor which is the biggest safety unit in an electric vehicle. Is it a ginormous on and off switch in case anything happens. And then back here we have a vacuum canister and a vacuum pump to retain the existing power brakes. And in the trunk we have the entire battery pack. What this is is a 96 volt pack of 8 volt golf cart batteries. They're a deep cycle and they're flooded lead acid. This provides 16 kilowatts of power that allows me to drive about 30 miles per charge. And also in the back we have a charger over here which is currently plugged in and charging the battery pack. Right now it takes about one hour to charge two and a half miles driven. On a normal day my battery pack will be charged in six and a half hours. That's with a standard 120 volt plug. If I got access to a 220 volt plug like a dryer outlet or it's like new charging stations they're installing around Massachusetts, I'll be able to charge the entire car under four hours my battery pack will get me 30 miles. So I can, if I have access to a 220 volt plug, I can charge my car in under four hours after driving for 30 miles. So the difference between a gas car and electric car is I have two extra gauges. One is the fuel gauge. This monitors each battery and basically tells me when I'm fully charged and when I'm empty. It also monitors each individual battery in the pack in case one's out of balance or has issues. And over here, this blue screen is the ammeter. This tells me how much current I'm pulling from the battery pack. The existing speedometer is still hooked up, and same with most of these other gauges except for the fuel tank and the heat gauge. And the car still drives like a normal car. Well, when a normal car starts, it's pretty loud. But when David starts his car, it's silent. In today's day and age, there's nothing really that normal about the car David drives. But maybe one day we'll all catch up to his speed. No, the most interesting part about David is that he's not a part of any green or electric movement. David does this because he enjoys doing it. 